As always, I'm your host, Ray Dunn. Hey, Ray. Down at the far end of the table is my uh, brother, Chris. How's it going, eh? Hi, Chris. Hey, Nick. Back from his MIA leave, Andy Jardine. Yo, I was... I thought it was thought it was very specific about where I was. <laughs> You're an MMA? Jeez. Yeah, I was this guy. It was a big fight. <laughs> big it was fighter. a big fight. I went the distance, but came up short. <laughs> Back on sound and audio, we've got my little brother, Nick Dunn. Hey you guys. See how I'm not giving you Nikki anymore? You like no, that? Thank you. Or would you prefer you. Nikki? I you know what I prefer. All right. Nick Dunn. Now, before we get into uh, our sponsors and stuff like that, tonight's a big night. I do have to uh, give a quick shout out to my mother-in-law. It's her birthday tonight. So happy birthday, Karen. Happy Happy birthday. birthday. Hi, Karen. I'd love to tell you guys what her last name is, but I can't get into that because it's her birthday. So we'll talk about that off air. She gets mad at me every time I bring it up. But uh, anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about our sponsors. I don't get it. I'll tell you later. Yep. All right. All right. So our sponsors, all right. First of all, we have to, uh, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, make sure you go out and get yourself a moose light. This stuff is scary good. Scary good. So scary. <laughs> scary. And if you're a sports team, an organization, one of these school teams that are back to school and you need hats, shirts, pens, jackets, whatever you need, Go Baseball see our caps. go see our buddies the Doyles Doyles corporate image the Doyles rule. And lastly, if your kitchen sucks, and you know most likely it does, be honest with yourselves. Probably. All right, you <laughs> got to go out and get my little brother Nick's uh, buffalo no done right sauce. There you go, done right sauce. The Reaper. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, testing out the sauce a little bit before the show tonight, and uh, you boys both had a taste of the Reaper. We had the Reaper sauce. Yep, I had that a couple weeks ago. It is, uh, it is pretty spicy. What'd you guys think? Yeah, it hits you harder than any of the other ones, and just kind of st- sticks around for an extended period of time. It does. So yeah, it's, good. it's delicious. And those are made with those Phoenix peppers, right, Nick? Oh my god, <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix peppers. <laughs> is this a joke I asked? Yeah. Carolina Reapers. Carolina, Carolina Reapers. Reapers. There you oh, go. Okay. <laughs> so there's our sponsors. Uh, tonight we got a big show. We're going to get into some NFL topics. We're going to talk a little Canadian football. We're going to mix the Canadian show and the uh, regular show back into one show again. And then last but not least, we're going to get into some odds and ends. Are you guys ready to talk some football? Let's ready go. to rock. Let's go. All right. Let's talk some football because we had some exciting games on the weekend, and we got to start with probably the most exciting game of the weekend, the Buffalo Stop Bills. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the Buffalo Bills <laughs> went 13-7 to over the Colts in a wild blizzard-like game. Did you guys have a chance to catch this game at all? That was awesome. No. I'm sh- no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you watched the whole oh, yeah. thing. I whole was thing. I was just uh, getting highlights and, and things like that and, and checking in on it once in a while just to see you know how how often they had to plow the the lines on the field just to be able to see them. It was getting pretty ugly. It yeah. was it was ugly out there. There was six to eight inches of snow, inches, not centimeters, inches of snow awesome. on the field. Awesome. Yeah. You know, we've gone to a lot of those tailgates. Those are one of the best ones to go to. It the, really is. The most snow I've ever been to, uh, I can't remember the year, it was the Buffalo Bills against Miami. And all I can tell you is uh, Miami had a linebacker named Brian Cox. Yeah, I remember. And uh, Brian Cox decided he was going to shoot the finger into the crowd. <laughs> And he must have had about 50,000 snowballs <laughs> raining all over him. <laughs> not, that, not that good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he was not well-liked in Buffalo, and uh, they, they definitely showed him that day. They showed him that day. But seriously, let's talk about that game. I, 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 I do want to talk about a play later in that game. Andy, let's get your opinion on this. I mean, we're biased being from that area. This game was played in basically blizzard-like conditions. You've got yeah. fans that have to travel, travel home. There's there's people, you know, in, you know, the staff putting their, you know, they've got a risk driving in that. Should the NFL be allowing games to be played in that kind of condition? 
Yeah, I think so. I think it's part it's part of the game. You know, you hear it all the time. It's it's part of the game. It's part of being one of the teams in the north and so on. So I mean, there's no as long as the stadium itself is ready to handle those conditions that they can at least do something with the snow so that the game can be played. Um, the fans know what they're getting into when they travel in for it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, what would the alternative be, really? Uh, the NFL foot in the bill for all these northern teams to have domes? Well, I was just going to... Completely gonna, changes I, the whole thing. Right? I was going to throw that question down to Chris and the fact that we know the Buffalo Bills are looking to build a brand new stadium. It's They're, they're looking at different plans right now. If Buffalo does build that stadium downtown Buffalo, do you think they should leave it an open stadium or go to a dome stadium where you wouldn't have weather like that for a game and it would open the opportunity for the Bills to host a Super Bowl at some point in time? What do you think of that? Well, the diehard Bills fan in me says <clears throat> no dome ever, ever. <clears throat> but realistically, if we're ever going to get a Super Bowl down here, that you, you got to go dome. And I think it's more marketable. I think you may get some other type of brands of, of fans out that you may be probably, probably, you know, you are, you see all these different videos on online of Bill's mafia of people going through tables. Yeah. Maybe it'd be a nice transition for, for some other type of fan base mm. to go when there's a dome. But so correct me if I'm wrong on this one, guys, cause like, you know, I don't know Buffalo as well as you guys do, but there's a lot more that goes into getting a Super Bowl than a dome and you need to have, your your city and the surrounding area needs to be able to needs to have a certain number of hotel rooms, yeah, exactly, a certain number of eateries and things like that. And Buffalo, it, it's been on the list for a long time. It doesn't qualify. Well, Buff- that's why that's why they're looking they're, that, move it away from Orchard Park. They couldn't have the stadium out there yeah, and qualify. Right. They'd have to put that stadium right downtown. Then you'd have right, water. right. Yeah. It's right. It's right in the city and Cleveland itself still. Which is bigger? It doesn't have what it takes. Like regardless of the dome thing, it yeah. doesn't have those requirements. And I'm pretty sure whether it was, it's Ralph Wilson or you put it right downtown, it doesn't really change the fact that it's in Buffalo and the city. Right, it's the same. So, anyways, I don't. I, I I've just always uh, I like. There's this running list out there, and Buffalo is a city that a city, regardless of where the stadium is, that doesn't qualify for a Super Bowl. So would you, that's what my understanding is. So would you think that the Niagara Falls area would be considered, like, really, if you yeah. had Niagara Falls? Yeah, when you, you look at Greater area. Niagara Falls, it'd be a great spot for a Super Bowl. It'd from be, a, it'd be there's great. tons of hotels. I, like I said, so I don't, could, don't yeah. compare just, Cleveland to Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Yeah. Come on, Andy. Yeah, you're not going to win this. Move on. You're, I mean, I'm not trying to win anything. Here, I'm we're, just like, we're yeah, ta- I don't we're think ta- you guys can get we're, a Super Bowl. We're talking about a snow game, and you're trying to I, rain on our parade. Yeah, so I agree. Right? A, I agree. A city that lost a football team to Buffalo. Even I'm as sorry, a non-Bills fan. We have Andy Jardine with a slight chance of showers today. <laughs> <laughs> Even as a non-Bills fan, I agree with Chris. No dome in Buffalo. That would change things up a little too much. Yeah. Um, and uh, I feel even stronger about that now that Simply getting a dome wouldn't mean a Super Bowl for you guys. You'd still not qualify. All right. Well, we're going to have to. I have a funny feeling if they're going to put money in, though. I, I think they're going to go more towards dome. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. I hope not. All right. No, me, let's, either. me either. Let's, I'm not oh, I, let's get into that game a little bit. I mean, there, you know, LaShawn McCoy had 156 yards rushing. Frank Gore had 130 yards rushing. Outside that, there wasn't a whole lot of other offense, really. I mean, there were. Kelvin Benjamin had 38 yards receiving, and uh, Mack from the Colts had 21 yards receiving. There was no passing taking place in this game. Well, of course. like th- This was a running game. It was a running game. <laughs> but in the fourth quarter, the Bills are driving the ball. There's four minutes left on the clock. It's fourth and one. They have two timeouts no, left in no, overtime. overtime. It's in overtime, yeah. I think said four, four, yeah. Yeah, there's four minutes left in overtime. Yeah. And fourth and one, and McDermott decides to send out the punt team. Uh, And he decides to send out the punt team. Then he calls a timeout to discuss it with his coaching staff. And I said, all right, good. They're finally going to go for this. And then they send out the punt team again. What do you think about that play call? Because I think it was the worst play call at that point in time. To get one yard in those conditions, the offensive line for the Bills would have gotten that themselves. I like this because it could, it could cause a, a nice little debate. But I thought it was the proper call, to be honest. Wow. Yep. But I'll, I'll, the reason being is if you take a look at what Indy did, so Indy had had fifty percent fifty percent of their passes, like Brissett only was able to complete fifty percent. Yeah. 
Third, third downs, on a third down percentage, only 25% they were able to complete on that. Mm-hmm. So in overtime, you know, just well, everyone else, is that when you, if they were to go down and possibly miss a kick, that's one possession, and then all they have to do is do one or two passes to put uh, Vinatieri in, and, and he's already hit over a 40-yard field goal. Two, two passes, and there you go, the game's over. I think they did the proper call. It wasn't. It, it was risky, but it was calculated, and they did the smart call. Well, Keep the thing, deep. Yeah, the thing is, though, with the time that was left in that game, and and at the end of regulation, the Colts had just driven the ball eighty yards for that for the score, right? And then there was a two point convert to win the game, and there was pass interference on that on that. Uh, so they had just driven. There's no question they couldn't have uh, couldn't have done that again. But they would have had the they had had the ball back. But but the, but the thing to go along with that is they had a lot of success with the run on that. Yeah. With four minutes left, it basically yeah. took them out of the run. They took ten minutes to march down the field there. Yeah, they took a lot yeah. of time. But even at four minutes, if they once they punt it, they can't run it the way they did and take up all that clock to get downfield. Yeah. They had to pass, and right now the stats were they didn't, weren't having success passing. Wow. So I I think it was it was a proper call and you know it it, it worked a different way yeah. because she, instead of hey you know what once you punt now we get the option to go one or two plays and then we have a, a good kicker that can make it but then shady shady took it to a new now, level all I can tell you is thank God shady was in the game because he was the one that made the decision that the Bills were going to win that game it wasn't a proper was call a, but it was a, it was a calculated and I like it it was a heart win it was a heart win it's hard to gauge how well somebody played in a in a mess like that but yeah. how did the rookie look he he oh. actually he he actually played already he went five for ten 57 yards through a nice touchdown pass at the end of the first half yep uh, he had three other good throws. Too, he he right? had some good hands. throws. Yeah, yeah. He well thrown. there there was the, he he played very well compared to the, his first start down in L.A. Yeah. But um, took a he took, took a, a he took a hard hit, and that that hit the 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 you could hear the helmet to helmet like it was loud on television. You knew he was injured. Right? Yeah. you knew he was injured right away. So. Anyways, that's that's the Bills. They win thirteen to seven in a blizzard. Yep. The playoffs are still live. They've got a sixty five percent chance as of today to make the playoffs this year. Nice. That's unbelievable. Andy. Yes, yeah. I was watching the scores. Now I wasn't flipping. Um I was doing a lot of stuff watching the game, but at one point I saw the Browns were up twenty one to something against Green seven. Bay. 20, to seven. 21 7 in the fourth quarter. Oh my goodness, what happened to the Browns? We were hooked. <laughs> we were hooked. Me and my brother in law were thinking, we were very cautiously optimistic. We we're like, there's plenty of time to give this game away, but this could really happen. Um, but it didn't. We gave it away. The Browns are too young to win. They have this young rookie quarterback that, even though he had his best game of the year or whatever, like I keep saying that every week, right? It's just not good enough. He makes the mistakes that you need to lose. And we have no surrounding cast that there's no men, like there's no veterans on the team at all. Like it's the youngest team in the NFL by a landslide. Yeah. They're too young to win. So that's really what happened. I mean, there's some positives in the game. Um, you know, our, our offensive or, um, our wide receiver core is widely known as probably the worst in the entire league. Right. Um, but Corey Coleman and Josh Gordon yeah. look like probably a top, 10 maybe even top five duo yesterday. Yeah, yeah. it was a, it on sunday it was amazing it's just they're too young to win so i'll leave how's, it at, how's gordon look though unbelievable yeah it's 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 out of it's unreal that a guy like that can not even play for a year and a half and just walk on and be the best player on the field and i'm not talking just about the browns right he was the best player on the field on the field yeah including the packers so oh. he's that he's that unreal like What it really comes down to is can Corey Coleman keep playing like that and can Josh Gordon stay on the field? Because I know Josh Gordon can can keep playing like that. But I know here, this is how I'll close this up. You know, the draft's coming. This season can't be over fast enough for me, Chris. And I know soon we're going to be talking, like, what quarterback do you want in the draft? What quarterback do you want in the draft? Because, I mean, we're going to be picking one in five. One one in five or one in six? It's one in five right now. Okay. As of now. Right. Um, and that we also own their second round pick. So we have three second round picks. We're picking Jeez. one in five and I think 14. How, in many, the second of, round. how many of the, how many of those seconds are they going to blow? 
<laughs> well, that's the thing. Now we have a real GM, which we're going to touch on later. I think, yep, right? We're going to touch. So we have yeah. a we have a GM. So, but you're going to keep asking for that. Listen, I'm we're sorry. Too, I had to. We're too we're too young. So if you ask me right now, here's what I want, and it's not going to happen. But here's okay. what I want. I want the Browns to throw all that salary cap because they have more than they can even use at Kirk Cousins. I want to yeah. see <laughs> Kirk Cousins come in. Take that number one pick and that number five overall pick and invest in the easiest positions to learn in the NFL. Get the Barkley kid who is a running back, which is the easiest position to adapt to in the in the NFL. Yeah, but you guys got Crowell, and he puts up he's, good yards. He's a free agent. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, he's a free agent. Okay. I'm out of here. Get the get this superstar kid, bring him in. Um, it's the easiest position to learn. And then another big need that we have, which is probably the second, arguably the second easiest position to learn, a free safety. Take really good players in the first round. Get Kirk Cousins in there if you can. It's not going to happen, but you know me. I want a Jimmy Garoppolo. I'd rather a, a good veteran come in. And then those second round picks, because we have five picks in the first two rounds, but we're too young. I don't want to use them. I don't want to draft five players. I want to draft three max in those first two rounds. So our new GM, which we'll touch on later, trade those picks, move around, do what you got to do, move up, give somebody a whole bunch of uh, stuff so that we take three Big time players in positions that can make impact right away in the first round, but that all comes down to like can like Cousins doesn't want to go to Cleveland, I'm sure. Yeah, but please yeah. try, please try. Yeah. Here's here's something interesting out of that game. So uh, uh, Hundley plays for Green Bay. Brett oh. or uh, and and uh, Rogers is on the sideline. He was an awesome coach on the sideline. Uh, I don't know if you guys pure, saw this, right? Team. Pretty, pretty yeah. Team. Now, there's talks he could play this week. Now, now Green Bay's back in the playoff hunt by the fact that they won this. They're on the bubble, yeah. right? Yeah. They are at Carolina, home against Minnesota, and then at Detroit. Can Rodgers come in and run the table to get Green Bay back to my Super Bowl prediction like I made at the beginning of the year? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Awesome. If well, he, I, I, if he, it's just set... Oh, go ahead. You no, know, you ahead, go. Sir. I was just going to say it's it's the stage is being set for that. Without a doubt, he can do it. Right. What, do, what do you think, Chris? Oh, I, I think so too. It's just I think they're going to have to knock out. I think Atlanta is the team that's going to have to slide out. I think Atlanta's playing too good. We'll see. We'll Aaron see. Rogers. We'll see. And you know, one quick thing. I I I, I really I'm going to compliment your Browns. Even though like they 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 uh, they lost in the end, but. You know, they forced Green Bay to go three times for like to, to a fourth down, and they had to decide tough calls. They made tough calls. They succeeded of two, I think, two of the three fourth downs. Yeah. And it's too bad your kid, you know, dropped, I think, two interceptions, Kaiser. You know, I think yeah. those were the big factors. He in threw the some bonehead interceptions. We had our young tight end drop a wide open, would have been a 30-yard gain. Like, that's the thing. Like, if your surrounding cast can make up for – um your rookie quarterback who stinks and is going to make his mistakes, then yep. you have a chance, right? But the problem is, like, we we can't make up for that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, let's move on. I Luke, want to Luke, go Luke, we're going to get to your questions here. Luke's got a lot of good questions that yeah. uh, that will fall into topics we have scheduled for in a bit. So okay. Stick around, good. Luke. We are going to now move over, and we're going to talk about our buddy Jason Kenny's team. <laughs> The Philadelphia Eagles go in we don't against talk the Rams. About them enough, right? I know, not enough at all. But now, <laughs> Philadelphia in rolls into the Rams, and I knew this was going to be a good game. This was going to be the best test for the Eagles uh, in a while. Yeah, and they go down there, and what a game between these two quarterbacks! They put on a show. This was one of the most entertaining games I've seen in a long time. Yep. And then from around the eight yard line, Wentz. Scrambles out of the pocket, runs in, dives headfirst into the end zone, gone. Yeah, that's a huge injury, not only for Philadelphia, but I'm getting sick of all these injuries across the NFL. Yep. First of all, let's talk about the Eagles. They did win this game. They've clinched home field advantage now for the playoffs. What are they going to do without Carson Wentz? They're going to roll with Nick Foles and and uh and see what he can do. I mean, he, he clearly doesn't bring the same thing to the table, but 
Philly has to be optimistic and think that if a guy did something once, he can do it again. And if you do, if you remember, I mean, Nick Foles was almost he an was, MVP one year. I he think was, he yeah. 25 touchdowns, two interceptions on a season. Yep. He hasn't really had much of a chance since. But the Rams' offense is very similar to the Eagles' offense. So um, we'll see what he can do. I mean, let's be honest. Carson Wentz, especially with the Tom Brady fall off, you know, uh, last night, Carson Wentz, like, to me, would have kind of moved into the favorite, I think, for MVP yeah. um, if it wasn't for him going down like that. So, yep. like, for, for Nick Foles to step in and fill those shoes is a lot to ask. But they have a good team all around. And if Foles can just do something, like a Case Keenum job, yeah. then, you know, I won't say Super Bowl, but I, I think they're they're going to be a tough team to face. You know, one, one big thing, I think, out of that team is even though he's gone down, which is a huge blow, the kid's a, f- a flat-out stud. Yeah. But F- Foles is a, is a capable game manager, and they have they have a very good team where they have a three-headed monster. You know, so, back, so, yeah. yeah, so the offensive is going gonna, is gonna, to, I think, change. Where they lean, they they lean more on Wentz. Now Foles just has to be a capable game manager, and I think he's he is a capable game manager. He came in, looked good, and I think that's you let the the running now take out. They they still have Ertz, they still have you know Jeffries there. They have some good targets. I think I think this is uh, going to be. A, I, I'm going to put a bolt. I don't think it's going to be as big as a, a, a hit as that maybe some people may think. The defense maybe. is still strong. Yeah. Well, know. the defense is lights. I mean. I'll tell you one thing, watching that game, if there's one player that I miss in a Buffalo Bills uniform, Nigel Bradham. Yeah. He nightmare. is a nightmare. Yeah. Love him. God, he's yeah. such a good player. Yeah. Love you. Yeah, so I mean, it's tough. Like you don't lose an MVP candidate and especially at the most important position in professional sports and uh you're 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 fine. But um Good luck, Philly. Well, Good luck, Jason I, it, Kenny. I think, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna we'll be a, a real we'll interesting see. race in the NFC to see what oh, happens yeah. here. Oh yeah, yeah. Another real interesting game here on Sunday night. The Pittsburgh Steelers mm-hmm. host the Baltimore Ravens. Yep. And this was a big game for Buffalo because if Baltimore won this, that would have awesome. that would have dropped the Bills' chances of awesome. making the playoffs. It, they always seem to be going against uh, Baltimore and, and KC when it comes to a playoff spot. Well, for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. This was another big late game win by Big Ben. This guy is clutch. I, I think the biggest question I have when I watch this, when I watch this team, I mean, you look at the weapons that they have, but... Is Antonio Brown having an MVP season? Mm-hmm. Can he be named yes. MVP as a wide receiver? He's the first like, one. He's it's, unbelievable. He'd be the first, one. He'd be the first yeah. wide receiver. So is he having an MVP caliber season? Yes. Can he be named MVP? No, not while there's a quarterback standing. Right. So Tom Brady, and, and I thought you were you guys are overreacting. Well, actually, you didn't really get into it too much in the show, but like earlier today on social media, you're overreacting a little bit to the whole, I know you're doing it as a joke. I, I hope. What? I hope. <laughs> you know, what are you that, talking about? That the Patriots are done and everything because they just lost their third game. We're not on the Patriots yet. That's the next game. Yeah, come on, Andy. Stick to it. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, so as long as there's a quarterback standing and one just went down and Carson Wentz, so yeah. as long as there's a quarterback standing, though, and I would even throw Case Keenum in there, uh, it, the quarterback's going to win over the receiver. So, Wow. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, yes, I think are, are they, could. Let me get you back on track. Are, are they primed to? Uh, I mean, watching the way they won this game, yeah. with the combination of Bell, the combination of Brown, Juju, do these guys have the ability? I, this is a big game they got coming up this week. But are these guys now primed to win the AFC conference? Like by win, you mean represent them in the Super Bowl? Yeah. No, I think it's still the Patriots. You think it still goes through the, the Patriots? Pittsburgh can't beat New England. They can't match up against them. In history, let's, let's talk about the next game first, then we'll come back to that game. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's talk. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, wait a sec. I, I, I just wanted to say just a few things about this game. Is You know, every time I try to count the Ravens out, the Ravens, they are a very competitive team. Very competitive. You know, every, but if you look at them, it's like, oh, Flacco looks like garbage, but they still they still seem to put up a win. This game showed me again of like this team is no joke. No, this this team is like a winning, still a winning team, no matter what. Like you know, I I have a few guys on the on, on the fantasy team. Woodhead always lets me down. Macklin lets me down. They still win. 
They still find a way to win. Yeah, but this Alex Collins. I mean, look at this running back. This guy has a huge day, 120 yards and a touchdown. Crazy. And he, and he gets two passes for 46 yards. I Did you see that play along the sideline? He catches the ball on the sideline. Two defensive players come right in. Awesome. And this is the one thing about defensive players that drive me crazy. Everybody's trying to throw that ESPN big hit with their shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to wrapping a guy up and taking him down? Yeah. Big plays would not be happening as much as they do in the NFL if guys would wrap up their tackler and, and take him down. down. I don't yeah. get it. I, I just wanted to say one thing about this game is at the very end, did you watch the very end where – Big bet, like they're they're marching down mm-hmm. the field. They're yep. they're down one point, yep. and they're looking at it, saying, "Okay, you know, we could we could run these next two plays, run down the clock. We've had a kicker that's already won one Pittsburgh, I think, a handful of games already this year. He's a capable kicker. He's shown he's clutch, and they let Ben throw, and Ben misses, misses. That lets the Ravens keep one t- one uh, timeout." Or I was like, is this is this a team like you know? It's that's not a typical play from a smart coach. Right. Run it, take away their timeout, run it again, drain it down. They'd have been down about twenty seconds left. Yeah. They would have kicked it, and they would have it would have been game over. Yeah. But instead, what happens? They come down, and this was much closer in the game than it should have been. Yeah. yeah. Bad call. Bad call by the by the head coach. Yeah. The, the Steelers coach is very overrated. Uh, their defense is terrible, yeah. and Ben's kind of up and down like that. I can't see them competing with the Pats, but anyways, yeah. Yep. We'll get into that because I, I, I have... You, who's Jeffrey McKinley? Uh, who McKinley? Who's this guy? McKinley. You know Jeff guy? McKinley. McKinley. Jeff McKinley. McKinley. Yeah. 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 He's a Steelers fan? Is he? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Shut us off, Jeff. Yeah. We don't want to talk to you. Why? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't know. He apparently likes the Steelers. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. He's a anyway. smart fella. Thanks for coming out, but... He, he's from St. Stephen. From St. Steve. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. All right. Let's get into this next and, game. And he, and he likes to fight. He, oh, he likes to fight sometimes. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble now. Uh, uh, yeah. Last Norm. night's Monday Night Football. It's been a long time since I've watched the Monday Night Football from opening kickoff right to the final whistle. I can't believe this, guys. Let me tell you this. He's glowing. He's I glowing. was I was cheering for Jay Cutler last night. Mm-hmm. This guy is still. I mean, he's still. I'm gonna say he still got it. No, he's got an arm. That, oh, absolutely. What? Uh, here's my biggest question for you. So they knock off. They they knock off New England. This defense was rocking Tom Brady. They put a lot of hits on him last night. My question to for New England fans out there. Is this game we saw last night the soon-to-be future of the New England Patriots? No. no. I, I'd love to be like go jump on that bad bandwagon, but no. Tom Brady's 40 years old. No, I mean, he is ridiculous. declining. Listen, this is what Miami did. I, I, I really put a lot of thought in this one. I've got a lot of thoughts, too. Miami yeah. pulled the Cobra guy. <laughs> yep. Did they sweep the leg? They did. No, they striked hard. They strike first, and no mercy. <laughs> no mercy. That's right. Okay. And that's how you beat New England. I know it's, yeah. it's, a, it's really corny, but you got to strike first. You can't, like when Buffalo went down, we threw an interception on the 10, messed up. New England's whole game plan is, you know, keep it easy, put up points, gradually get that ball going, and their game plan is once they have a lead on you, you're done. They, they're just, like, the defense plays like plays well, they're going to shut it all down, but they took New England out of their game plan. Well, they they were on a different level. Even that that cornerback last night, Xavier Howard, he was oh, all yeah. over the field last Cooks, night yeah. making Cooks plays. Was shut down. Cooks was he was there was no dinner in Cooks' kitchen <laughs> yeah. last night. So like yeah, they did the Cobra Kai, but let's <laughs> let's um, let's actually football speak the Cobra Kai here. So Miami has the. I think we talked about this a little a uh, little while ago pre-show. Miami has the the formula, yeah. and they've won four out of the five last games against New England in Miami. So to beat New England, you have to you have to rush four effectively, uh, and Miami has one of the best defenses oh, yeah, fit absolutely. for that with that crazy line, and then you know Wake and they, you know they've got a linebacker to throw in there. You got to rush four uh, and and get there. And you have to play bump and run coverage like all over these guys. And even then, you know, you have to hope that Brady's targets can't win their one-on-one matchups. And when you take Gronk out of the equation, 
You take Edelman off the field. Amendola, I don't know if he's completely healthy. I mean, he's not really all – like, I mean, I don't he really consider – He has moments. Yeah. yeah, he has moments. I don't consider him a great receiver anyways. No. He like Brady's guys didn't come through for him last night. Like no. they could not get open. And you're right. The the kid that was covering um, uh, Cooks was playing out of oh, his mind. He, yeah. It was unbelievable. And anyway, they they had the recipe. They know it, and it seems to work for them in Miami. It's not like they don't try it in New England, right? So, yeah. but it seems to work for them in Miami, and and they New England just couldn't get anything going last night. But Belichick's going to go look at this game, and he's going to analyze the heck out of what they need to do when their guys can't win one-on-one matchups. Yeah, and uh, I think you're like I'm not worried about this. No, but no, Jay no Cut- New England. But you're sure. right. Jay Cutler looked on like looked really did, good. Did you see that one where he dod- he dodged a, 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 a sack? Yeah. Oh yeah. He spins around. I'm like, yeah. come on, that's and not never, Jay. And Jay ne- Cutler usually goes down immediately. Yeah, yeah, and yeah Never yeah. immediately. Never <laughs> once in that entire game did Jay Cutler look like he was having any fun. No, <laughs> like, he doesn't. I'm winning. Uh, yeah, he'd make this yeah. great play, and he'd just kind of do that weird tick he has and just, <laughs> I hate the world. Yeah, and just move on. It's, <laughs> it, it was the most bizarre the game. Be- the beaver. I, I, did, I did not expect that. I did not expect that game last night when I was watching it. I'll tell you that. Uh, and 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 again, even, even the running backs with Miami last night, that Drake, they got rid of a J.I., and you're wondering J-I? a J I a J A <laughs> J I whatever, <laughs> and they got this kid Drake now. He puts Love in a 114 yards last night. I mean, and and he was the lead receiver for five catches for 79 yards. Kid's a beast. This a beast. this kid was. I mean, New England couldn't stop him. Yeah. No, and their yeah their offensive line did a good job, uh, opened things up for him a little bit. New England's defense, like, there's a reason why the camera was on Matt Patricia. All the time, yeah. yeah. Like they were getting gashed, yeah. So, a lot, a lot of uh, really cool formations too. How they kept doing like quarterback bootlegs out, yeah. You know how they're doing some motions. It there was, was, it was there really, was one really that place. I don't know if you remember. There was one that was my best, the, my favorite Cutler moment. Like they had this crazy exotic play there in the the red zone, and it did not work at all. And Cutler ended up taking a sack, and the look on his face was great. He's like. <laughs> Why? Why do I play this game? Like, why? Why did I come out of retirement at all? Like, oh yeah, the gash. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's that. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. don't even think he cares. So, yeah. Well, New England, uh, they've got a big match this week. They're going in against Pittsburgh, and this is gonna be a big one. Now, listen, you cannot tell me that Miami's offense is even comparable to Pittsburgh's. It's not even comparable. Say that again. That Miami's offense is even comparable to Pittsburgh's offense. When you look at Bell pounding yeah. the ball now, yeah, yeah. there is no way New England's defense is going to stop Pittsburgh this week. I think Pittsburgh uh, is going to roll. Man. Antonio Brown, Stephon Gilmore cannot cover Antonio Brown one on one. I'm staying away from this topic. He uh, cannot no. cover him. No, nobody can cover him one on one. Well, that's right. Yeah, nobody can cover him one on one. And I, they're not even going to try. Especially Gilmore. Butler can't cover him one on one. I I think I think uh I'm picking Pittsburgh to win this week. Big. Big. Well, big. I don't know. Well, for the sake of my fantasy matchup against this guy in the playoffs, I hope you're right. This yeah. guy. But uh <laughs> I don't know, Ray. I think you're overdoing it a little All right. bit. We'll, well, talk, yeah. we'll we'll wait and see where this game goes this week. Um I, I I think I think this is definitely the game of the week that you have to watch. I think yeah. the winner of this game, whoever wins this game, will be the team that go, wins the AFC. I don't think any team can challenge huh. New England or Pittsburgh for the AFC well, this let's, year. Let's talk really quickly about the X factor in all of this, which Luke brought up a little while ago, and that's uh, the Patriots' shiny new receiver, fresh off the uh, being cut by the Browns, Mr. Kenny Britt. Yeah. Um. We call him uh, in the Cleveland fan base as Dwayne Bow 2.0. That's yeah. what we call him. <laughs> um, do you think this is going to be another example of some punk that goes and gets paid by a crappy team and then joins New England and just I, goes I, crazy? I, I don't because no? the biggest problem Brady had last night, the way Miami played last night, and, and other teams are going to be watching this, Tom Brady could not get the ball out to his wide receivers. Good pressure. There was good pressure going out. Uh, good coverage, good schemes. Yeah. yeah, and they weren't. They just weren't getting open. Like they yeah. could. They couldn't beat. 
the the aggressive bump and run coverage and they just couldn't win their matchups. But yeah. if there's one kid from Miami or from New England that really impressed me, that's that Burkhead. This kid is getting better and better each week. Yeah, they've They're, got so many quality backs coming out of oh, there. Their running backs do lots of fun stuff. How man. much money are they paying Gillisley to sit on the bench but again? They, Don't know. Yeah. You yeah. tell me. But question: He's the next Bill. Gonna, Five million. But are they going to be that effective mm-hmm. once Brady's gone? Like when you no, have, when no, you, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. They're good. They're good backs. Don't get they're me wrong. good backs. Yeah. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Look, Brady's not going for a long time. Let's focus on the quarterback that is going soon, and it will make my day is when Big Ben's gone. Hey, the Browns were taken over once Big Ben's finally gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, all I have to tell you is this: it's Jesus been crap. it's been two weeks since Jimmy Garoppolo has been playing in the NFL. Yeah. And Whoa. in his two weeks. He's been a starter. Starters. For his he's new been team. a starter for his new team, and he's two and zero oh as a starter. Yep. And in that time, Tom Brady's one and one. Just saying. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. We've got uh, still a number of topics to talk about, but we are going to do a little switch here, and uh, we're going to move over to some Canadian football here real quick. Yeah. Um, because I just have a couple updates I want to tell you guys. Um, in the AUS, some AUS news. There's been some. Uh, Crazy stuff happening here in uh, our local Sackville area. Jacob Laux, who we had kind of talked a little bit uh, yeah. at the high school final, I heard that uh, I heard a rumor that Jacob had uh, cleared his locker or or had left the school. Mm-hmm. He has officially left Mount A as a quarterback, yeah. and he's taken some program at a smaller institution in Ontario. Yeah, he's done. He's I, he's he, done football. His all farewell is he's finished football. I think he. I think he's already a father. I think he's going to focus on his family and his education. Yeah. Um. Don't don't hold me to that father remark. But I, yeah. I've seen plenty of pictures with him. With <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. So um. Good for him. Um. Man. What a what a loss for the Mounties. But uh. Hopefully they they have they they had a, a that good backup quarterback that played a few games for them. Um. He's a senior. He's a senior. He was a senior, yeah. Well, let's see what my Mounties do because, uh, I mean, I've, I've heard uh, a lot of people say Jacob Looks is pro- was probably the best passer in the entire AUS. Oh, he was. He, right. he was so definitely there. This would be tough. Here's another shocker from uh, Mount A. Scott Brady, the head coach of Mount A, steps down last week Jimmy. and has accepted a role as defensive coordinator for McMaster University in Hamilton. Wow. So now they're without their star quarterback, and their head coach just steps down. But I've got inside information saying no concerns in Mount A. It's business as usual, and, and they're working at building that team for next year. So, nice. nice. Yeah. Wish them the best. Over to the CFL. Andy, the first team fired shots as far as quarterback for uh, next season goes. The Argos acquire James Franklin, 26 years old, from Edmonton. Yep. What's this? What's this move tell you about Ricky Ray's status? I, it tells me that Toronto's either not sure what's going to happen, or they already know. But I mean, this was this guy. There's going to be. You're still getting used to the CFL, just yep. like I am, Chris. Like the movement uh, during the off season is crazy, and this season especially with all the quarterbacks that are free agents. And this kid uh, was the most highly sought after guy. I mean, he went into to Edmonton. He was playing uh, back up to the league MVP. Um, said he wanted to play. Every time he got in, he was magic. Yeah. And uh, but he wasn't quite established enough that he would demand the big big price tag like. Caleros or guys like that so he was probably the biggest prize to land quarterback wise and the Grey Cup champs who have Ricky Ray yeah. got a hold of this kid so I'm thinking if he like he told Edmonton like I'm done playing as a backup I want to play and he's choosing to go to Toronto now let me let me explain what it truly is they traded for in a sec but if he's choosing that he either knows Ricky's going or he's comfortable with playing behind Ricky for a year just to get to know the offense and so on, and and uh, he's joining a great organization. For the record, um, in the CFL, things are nuts the way like things get traded around. So what Toronto actually acquired, and they gave up a stud offensive lineman uh, for this, they just acquired the early negotiation rights for this kid. 
Right. So they're allowed to start negotiating a new contract with the kid before everybody else. That's it. Okay. So if he doesn't like what they have to say or if things fall apart, he doesn't have to sign with them. And they, they gave away that offensive lineman for nothing. Though I read, I did some reading, it's very rare that this type of trade for early Isn't negotiation done. rights happens if chances are if they've you're already not had, sure if you're not sure you they've, sign they've talked to his agent already so anyway that's that's exciting stuff and uh, i can't like i'm really following the cfl offseason closely i can't wait to see more of the quarterback chips fall yeah especially when my boy johnny manzel comes to hamilton well there you go i was just gonna bring it up so Ju- june jones gets his contract extended as the head coach in hamilton in his very first press conference as 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 now you know the 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 future head coach of the Hamilton Ticats, he makes a statement that Johnny Manziel will be the greatest player to ever play in the CFL. Or could, wow. or, or could be. Could, could be. be. Yeah, could be. Yeah. So what do you think of this? Is is this, so is Manziel coming to the CFL? Well, do you want to uh, well, give, you know, give us your uh, opinion most, on just, that just, statement? Just from what we've seen some, from the some NFL players that made a transition over, it's it, it wasn't as big as what we thought when when Ricky Williams went to uh, the Argos, he he wasn't dominant. You know he played all right, but he was he, he wasn't dominant. Doug Flutie was on that team, so that I mean Doug Flutie was dominant. Yeah, right. So yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I, I, I just for the pure entertainment, I I hope he does turn out to be yeah. something flashy. That'd I, be fun. But I, I hope he goes back to the same money. Yeah. I want to. I don't want him to be conservative. Yeah, let me touch on that for a sec. So. I do think he's coming. I think he, if he makes it through the summer without getting into trouble, he's not getting in the NFL again. So this is his shot. I do think he's coming. I think June Jones making outlandish comments like that is just kind of solidifying it. I do think Johnny's coming. I think Johnny and Mazzoli are going to enter camp and fight for the job. And I and I don't. Know I that, like Mazzoli. He's a good quarterback. Oh yeah, he's he's fun. So and I don't know that Johnny can even win that job. And I don't know that it matters if he does. But I think. This is so good for the CFL. Even if this experiment blows up on them, you you told me ESPN3 is negotiating rights to cover the CFL games, they and are. Johnny Manziel is a god in Texas. So oh. so all of a sudden you have Texas, Southern United States tuning into CFL just to see Johnny. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I got to get the Tebow now. <laughs> well, yeah, Montreal's I, I, reached yeah. out to him. It's really? funny you said that. Much, they have his Montreal has his rights. And they've reached out to him again about uh, interest in playing in the CFL. So nice. they've, I, in, they've invited him to Montreal to come see the city. Nice. These, these failed NFL guys like coming in that are really high profile are really good for the league. And, and even Trent Richardson, we thought that was hilarious. He was he just got better every game. Yeah. and had a monster, like 140-yard game, uh, his last one of the season with yeah. the Riders. So uh, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I didn't know that about Trent It's very Richardson. entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. yeah. All right, that's your CFL Canadian update. Okay. Um, we are now going to go into our final segment, which we always do, um, and this is called Odds and Ends. How's the uh, comments going on Facebook? Is there anything going on Facebook we need to know about? Yeah, it's going good. There's lots of chatter happening in here. Um, I got a request for us to talk a little uh, Chargers. Okay, yeah, Chargers. Def- definitely. Yeah, um, from a few people now, and uh, they're wondering. You they know, had another big win this week. Chargers had another big win. Chris, I'm going to throw it down to you because you made the prediction that the Chargers could win the AFC West this year. When you said that, we were all, I was anyways. Yeah. Um, they're right there. Like, they're right there. Talk to us about the Chargers. Defense is, uh, has really come around, just like we said the last episode. We, we, we saw the, the offense gel better and better as the, as the year has gone on. Now they have a more favorable uh, uh, schedule coming at the end here now. So if any of those top teams start failing, Chargers are taking it. Yeah. You, can, like, you, you, you can't slow down for these guys. Uh, I think Rivers is arguably like one of the hottest commodities in, in the NFL right now. Yeah. Allen is a beast. He's always been a beast, but it took him a little time. You know, when I, I, I drafted him, Andy and I are going head-to-head for a playoff game, so I'm expecting a big, big things from Allen uh, this, this week. So am I, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but he didn't have big weeks during, during the first half. But he's now, coming off a big injury, right? So yeah, true. And took, I, I think it took some time, time yeah. but now he's hitting full throttle. So yeah, good to see. Phil Rivers has been one of my favorite quarterbacks in the league since he's been in the league, um, and I just, I just want to see the guy put it all together yeah. long enough to, to, to really propel his team over the top. You know, he he gives us little 
sprinkles of greatness like this, and then it all falls apart, and we figure out a way to blame the rest of the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? The truly great ones just will their teams to victory like that, especially at the end of the game if they're down like the way Ben did, like you were like you were explaining. I, and I want to see Rivers, you know, do that. And you're right; they have an interesting. There's a few holes in their defense, but Bosa and uh, Bosa is just a monster. Too. So. Anyway, I'm I'm rooting for the Chargers. I hope they make the playoffs. So you Charger fans are asking. Just a, just a quick thing, like you, you know, we've talked about Philly. There's like when you go on uh, NFL Access, they talk about other teams that could be dominant. But you notice, like they don't talk about the Chargers being no. the dom. Like right, maybe because they're not in a playoff spot yet. Yeah, but it's taking right now. I think on. arguably, like that's the team that could beat all teams. I I got a question for you guys, and I, I don't know if you'll know this. Maybe somebody on Facebook will know this. So. Um, one of the things they stated during the Pitts or during the Philadelphia Rams game is that with the Rams having that new stadium in LA, they're still having a tough time selling out games. Yeah. And and the and the fans, <clears throat> when you looked at the the crowd in the stadium, it was primarily Philadelphia fans in the stadium. Yeah. How's the Chargers? Now, the Chargers are playing in that smaller college. Tiny little Like thing, only yeah. 38,000 like people, right? Yeah. Uh, how are they doing with attendance to their games? Do, any, any idea? Uh, yeah, I actually, um, I read a few things about it, and it's it's almost like the San Diego experience has followed them to L.A. Okay. Because, you know, in San Diego, right, it was always, if there was a, if they were playing against a team that their fans traveled well, at least 50% of the stands were going to be those fans. Um, if they were playing against a team that didn't travel well, at least 50% of the stands were going to be empty. Right. And uh, it's looking like L.A. didn't want this team. I don't even know that LA wanted the Rams. Like, so right. we'll see how it goes. But yeah. it's it's kind of the same experience. I, I mean, it's good that they're in a small stadium, so yeah. they could I, they couldn't sell more tickets as they wanted. But yeah, it's it's not been it's been the same sort of thing, right? Like, okay. Can I make one comparison? I, I think it's a, a little bit. And tell me if I'm way off. But when Toronto got the got the uh, basketball team, it took time, right? Where you know maybe some people say no, there's inst- instant you know fan base. But I kind of saw that it was like kind of gradual. Now it's like there's. I think there's no stronger fan. I, a comparable. I think it's comparable mm-hmm. to any strong fan base. Now, now the Raptors type of uh, fan base. When but Toronto it took time, I thought. Uh, they had a lull, but when Toronto first got their team and they drafted Damon Stoudemire over number one overall, and so they they had a really good crowd. Awesome. But it, it there was a lull. Yeah. yeah. Let's uh let's get into some odds and ends. We'll cut, we'll check back with Facebook here in a little bit. And I you know what? We got to remember that when we start this show, we got to make mention to our Facebook crowd because we really want this to be interactive. Uh as, as interactive as possible. And and do us a favor. We just don't want to hear from Luke, okay? There's oh, other people out yeah. there. Luke. All right. Fun. Put it on hey, hold on now, it. Luke. Man, we appreciate you. Thanks a lot for for uh, for commenting <laughs> and always being being a part of this. And and you know what? The major question about Luke is is this, guys. Or and Bob. I and I mean this in a positive way. <laughs> He's either our biggest fan or our boredest friend. Or our boredest friend. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. I appreciate <laughs> them both, Luke. I appreciate them both. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I enjoy right. you, Luke. That was the I worst Luke you. impression. That was the worst. That was terrible. Yeah. All right. I want to apologize to you, Luke, for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to odds and ends. So the NFL issued a memo out to all the NFL teams today about aggressive conduct or contact against the officials. We've had three situations now this year. Marshawn Lynch, uh, he, he touched an official earlier this year. Sean Coleman from Cleveland, right tackle. He brushed a umpire. Mm-hmm. And Sean Payton come out and charged a uh, an official <laughs> over one of his calls this year as well. That was clearly a high-profile one. Yeah, it was very high-profile. What do you think the league needs to do about this? So, like when they talk about stiffer fines, that they need to come up with stiffer fines, when you look at what Gronk did again against the Bills and gets one game, I wasn't here last week. I really wish I was oh, yeah. here to talk about that. That, that would have been great. Um, but Gronk gets bad. one game for that. Yeah. If you touch an official, I like when you look at like local sports. If you play hockey, for example, here in Moncton, and you touch an official on the ice, you're gone for the year. Oh yeah, you're, you're done. lucky to you're come done. back. Period. That's right. Yeah. What what kind of penalties need to be put in place when it comes to the NFL? Um, 
Do you want to start with this one? I, I, I really, I, 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 I talked about it last week, but I think it's really going to come down to the, to the NFLPA. Like they're, they're going to have to set the bar to be saying, what happens? I need, we need your input. And so that they can't fight it all the time. Because the most frustrating thing that I hear from a lot of, a lot of people is that, like Gronk, even arguing that, even like putting that up and saying like I'm I'm trying to get that negated so he can come back and not miss any games is so frustrating. They yeah. shouldn't be able to challenge any of that. No, you did a dirty play. You don't get to challenge that. Right. You're done. You're done. Yeah. I I mean officials can be jerks too, right? Yeah. And uh, and they've been caught on on tape doing that. So John Kavanaugh. As long- Sorry, go. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um. And they've been caught on tape like that, so I think it's always going to be sort of a, an objective conversation. And I yeah. mean, did the, the 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 officials sometimes, you know, maybe not rightfully so, feel untouchable, and we'll say yeah. whatever here and there. But no, it, it it does. It needs, especially like it just needs to be a reviewable thing, like everything. And uh, but you, I agree with you, Chris. Like there should be no appealing some of these things, yeah. right? Yeah. Gronk deal. got one game on that because traditionally he's never done anything like that. I guess. Um, but I agree with you. Like, I mean, you guys are Bills fans, but like, I agree with you. Like, that was so blatantly bad. Um, like that there shouldn't, it, they should have laughed and gave him a second game. Right. That, he, right. that he even bothered. It, it should have been. Yeah. Sexual misconduct news has made its way into the NFL. It's, Yikes. It's the theme of 2017. That's Marshall. Why, that's, that's why we Marshall, sent Andy for sensitive, sensitivity training this week. Yeah. Last he, week he was in there. Yeah. Andy. <laughs> Marshall Falk, so Ike Taylor, and now Heath, <laughs> Heath Evans. Heath yeah. Evans, they've all been suspended by the NFL Network. Yeah. This is just a start. I, I can just imagine. I, I, here's my personal thoughts on this. Okay. I can't believe that uh, Michael Irvin wasn't in that group of players. Because he's already being investigated, right? And and I, <laughs> I he was already part of. Yeah, I can, why. I can, I can <laughs> just, uh, I can just. Uh, he hasn't been suspended though, but no. I can just imagine how uh, how many other players, whether it's ESPN, Fox, or whatever the case may be, that are going to come up in these news stories. Well, I mean, the sky's the limit now, right? Because there's no there's no time frame that's that's off limits. There's people reporting things from 1995. Like, I mean, it's it's all over the place. <laughs> Do you remember Michael when Michael Irvin was um, while they were running through the initial investigation? He wasn't on game day morning a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember back when Aaron Andrews was the Fox weather girl t- on on the Fox pregame show? Yeah. Those guys would make. Oh, comments so, so like borderline crazy comments. borderline comments. <laughs> you wait and see. There's yeah. more of this coming. Look, I, I'm, at, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it, yeah. and, and I know it's important stuff. And I guess, yeah. like you know, and maybe this we're gonna have to go through like a, a period of hearing about this nonstop, just yeah. so people can be trained to act the right way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like it's you know I, it's it's unfortunate that it's going on. But there's, I mean, there's 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 like I'm not saying, like. They're sports athletes. If they keep doing this, like they're all, the whole league is gonna have to There's shut gonna down. Be nobody playing. Do you see some of these guys in in person? Yeah, like they're they're yeah. All right, we've got a couple. We got a few minutes for a couple more topics. I'm not gonna get to everything here. Uh, Devin Hester, he has announced his retirement today. He sends out two quotes: "Good news, Goodell, you can put the kickoff back at the 30 yard line. Bad news, y'all all have to find a new favorite runner." <laughs> is he the best ever to play, and does he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? You got ten seconds, Chris. What do you think? Yeah, I, I like Andy to start in this one. Okay. Yeah. Started off a few times. He's the best special teams returner, both kick and punt ever. Yes. Uh, should he be in the Hall of Fame? There's no precedent there. Like, there's no return specialist. Only I don't think. Right. Uh, you know, there's kickers, but I don't think so. Um, yes, he is the best uh, Hall of Fame. It'll be a stretch. Yeah. Okay. Mine's simple. I think, yeah, he should be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think they're they're the most under uh, like not not viewed enough like sp- more special teams. They just maybe don't have even a subcategory for him. Yeah. Because there's a lot of character with these guys. Okay. Another quick topic here: Eli Manning back in for the Giants. They lose thirty to ten against the Dallas Cowboys. Eli goes thirty-one for forty-six, two hundred and twenty-eight yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. What's next if you're the head coach of the Giants? Are you playing them, or are you starting the are you starting the younger guys? 
two, uh, a GM and a head coach got fired. You are yeah. starting Eli Manning. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know there is a head coach yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. New York. But yeah, whoever's yeah. there, they're going Manning. You're in. Right, I don't right, care what happens. Right out the rest of the year. That's right out a, the rest. That's of a year. mess. Yeah. Can you imagine in a, in a room of eight, eight. So we're thinking of sitting you this. <laughs> yeah. One. Yeah. We think the young kids need a chance. <laughs> Cleveland Browns hire their GM. And what's weird, I find about this hire. Normally, this kind of stuff would get done in, in the off season. Yeah, yeah. Here we are, three weeks left to go in the regular season. They oh, I hire love it. I love it. John Dorsey yep. as their new GM. They did interview Doug Whaley. I can't believe he didn't get the job. But Doug, uh, Doug, Doug, yeah, Doug Whaley. That might have been a Rooney Rule thing. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, how's this gonna? How's this guy gonna impact the future of the Browns? He's a, a super respected, one of the best GMs in the league in terms of uh, player evaluation. This is what we need. We need a football guy to come in. The reason they're doing it right now is because they needed to get a guy before the Giants did. Yeah, and the Giants is is a very uh, you know attractive job. And this is all about this crazy draft we have coming up with five picks in the first two rounds. We need a guy coming in here and getting ready to pick good players. Yeah, so, yeah. I love it. It's great. Awesome. Yep. All right, last topic of the night here before we get out of here. And to some people, this is considered football news. To me, not so much. But the Toronto FC beats out Seattle Boom. in a rematch for the MLS champion. Toronto, They now Argos win the Grey Cup, and a couple weeks later, Toronto FC wins the MLS championship. The Leafs look good. Jeez. The Leafs look good. Toronto's not a bad place to live these days. What do you think? <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Congrats to 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 the soccer team. Eh. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I'm, glad, I'm happy for them, and they have they have crazy fans. And uh, it's yeah. it's kind of odd to me. And uh, but it's but it's fine. But like it's you know the the FC fans in Toronto. There's way more of them than Argos. And like yeah. Argos. And like even after the Argos just won the Grey Cup, they're still get we're. Their the number their attendance is going to be a topic of conversation again next well, this, year. Yeah. I think FC, the Toronto FC is going to be like as far as fan base goes. I think that's just going to be keep on going. Like this is something that's going to be massive. It's going to be. It's, I think it's going to overtake a lot of the other major sports that you think that are going on in Toronto. That's my prediction. Well, there's a lot of right. cultures in Toronto. Yeah. Toronto's a very culture city, very and, much, and, yeah. and and a when lot the of World Cup is going on. Oh, the it's bars massive. downtown in Toronto are. Out of control. Oh, they're, yeah. They're so yeah. fun. They, they even make me like soccer. Yeah. <laughs> Except for those draws. You know, right. the guys that are just having the time of their life watching a 0-0 zero, zero game. Yeah. I just, I can't get on board. Back. I can't he get on back. board. There you go. He passes back. He passes back. All right. So that's our topics for this week. But before we get out of here tonight, Chris, what's your final thoughts getting out of here tonight? Or, well, do, or do you guys want to have a joint final thoughts session? Yeah, we'll do that. All yeah, right. Yeah. Joint final thoughts session by Andy and Chris. Well, you know, we had a, a tough uh, fantasy football league where Ray, you know, Ray had a, a team that should have went to the top, but Ray made some horrible moves, and, and, and Andy overtook Ray. I could not stand to have Tom Brady, Brady and Cooks. I had to get rid of You don't get Sorry. the defense. Sorry. Sorry. Some, of the, some of the worst trades I've seen. <laughs> like, he made some trades just for the sake of making trades, and really <laughs> what it came down to was I had a team that was just a ragtag group of guys. I had way too many Cleveland Browns on my team. <laughs> Uh, but they're they're the players I know the best, and came down to the final week. I was win. If I win, I'm in against Ray. Um, he's telling me the podcast the week before that Alex Smith has been benched for Patrick Mahomes is not going to play, <laughs> so he, so he has no chance. I had no idea where he found that news. Probably, I, I, probably on a Bills I website or something. For a bit there too. So anyway, Alex Smith scores like a, a season record seventy two <laughs> points. <laughs> and somehow I pull out the victory anyways with uh I had some some good weeks. So I snuck into the playoffs. First round I'm I'm the I'm the underdog. Somehow I win in the first round uh on the on Carson Wentz who who did enough before he got hurt. Yeah. So now I march into the semifinals against Chris, uh even bigger underdog this time. I'm comfortable in that role and uh you better bring it you'll see that uh, uh there's a couple requests to talk about chargers you'll see why i'm pulling definitely for the chargers i got a lot of chargers going into this and uh we're going to post it up there yeah to post both of our lineups just to, just to see what your your point of view is of who do you think is going to win this week 
Yeah. Maybe we can even throw uh, something out well, there. Well, we're going to put a little can... bet on it, and you'll see that I'm kind of I have to resort to Big Ben as my quarterback yeah. now. So I'll be going for the Steelers just long enough for him to do a lot. Right after that, he can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, Whoa! And uh, <laughs> sorry, Mr. but but yeah. <laughs> beginning of the season, uh, Chris and I made a bet. It was one of the worst bets I would say <laughs> of all time. It's true. Um, I made a bet with him that Tony Romo would not be playing in the NFL after like he signed a contract and it was confirmed he would not who, be playing. Who NFL. who made the initial bet though? Yeah, Chris. Oh, Chris, yeah. Hey, yeah, Chris, <laughs> I, Chris proposed hey, it you, and you I was guys, like, uh, write my you, name down. You, you sign guys, me up. You guys yeah. bugged me about the Chargers, you bugged me about uh, about uh, Rogers coming back. Yeah. I missed on this one. All right, I missed. Fair on enough. This one. So okay, so let's get to it. So bottom line is the first thing Ray said to me after that's the worst bet of all time is you know Andy you're never seeing that beer. Right? Yeah. It was a twenty four. Uh, well, what? I'll fair enough. That up. We're well, you know, we're pretty deep into the uh, into the league year now, and I still haven't seen this case of beer. But we're gonna we're gonna put a bet. He can still come back. So he can still play. Yeah. So he can still play. Still so, so here's the bet. So uh, we're gonna put a little bet on our our fantasy game this week. If uh, if Chris wins and he's expected to, yeah, um, by a lot, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut the uh, the Romo bet down from a like 24 to 12. Okay, I think it's a business decision too. I mean, 12. I stand a slightly better chance of ever seeing it, <laughs> but probably not great. I still if got, I, still I win, two, though, I still got two games. It can be, That's be awesome. Back. If I win, if I win That's this, awesome. Chris has to deliver this 2-4 to me live on the air next week on this show. Okay, yeah, I will, and. He has to live on the air. Grab it. Down three tablespoons right of, air, right? of the new Carolina Reaper done right sauce. Those are big heaping spoonfuls. Yeah. Uh, you see it. It's on the it's table. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Chris and I both tried a little bit of it tonight. It's got some kick to it. It's got I lo- heat. I loved Woo. it. It was really good. But uh, three tablespoons back to back. And I'll be pouring those spoons, folks. <laughs> nice. And that's with those Phoenix <laughs> peppers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. anyway, right. let's hope I win. Uh, I'm the underdog. But <laughs> the next week's show will be very entertaining if I pull this out. All <laughs> right. There you go. That's the final <laughs> thoughts from Chris and Andy. You're not going to have it. Nick, before we get out, do you have any final thoughts? You've been pretty quiet tonight. Not much going on at the back table. Yeah, I'm just concentrating on our uh, on our levels here. How's the levels? Have they been good tonight? Pretty good. Pretty good show tonight? All right. Before we, I give you my thoughts, uh, I just want to again uh, announce or mention our sponsors. If it's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, whatever the case, make sure you get yourself some Moose Light. The stuff is scary good. Scary. It's scary, scary good. good. And if you're a sports team, an organization, one of these school teams, or hey, if you're a realtor and you need shirts, hats, jackets, or whatever the case would be. I just noticed one of them in the room. Oh, oh nice. you yeah. got to go see our buddies at Doyle's, Doyle's Corporate Image. The Doyle's rule. Doyle rules. And lastly, if your kitchen sucks, and you know most likely living in Moncton here, it probably does, yeah. you got to go see my little brother Nick. Get some of his done right sauce. It's going to spice that kitchen up. There you go. And if you're a realtor, you're trying to sell a house, the kitchen sucks. Throw a bottle of there that in go. there. Yeah, just throw it on. There you go. <laughs> just for looks. Yep. Here's my Ste- final thoughts Ste- before we get out of here. Called. Big football games coming up this weekend. We've been talking about Pittsburgh and New England. I'm reaching out to some of my Pittsburgh buddies here. I know somebody's got a spare jersey. I want to wear a Pittsburgh colors coming this Sunday. If anybody's got a spare jersey, I'd love to have it. I'll Fuji, wear it. Fuji? Fuji Apparently, he wants a Shawn Michaels super kick in the face, too. <laughs> there you go. Better make sure I'm not around when you have that on. <laughs> Enjoy the games this week, guys. Have a great week. Later, guys. See everyone. Oh, that was terrible. Ah! <laughs>